Well, good Monday morning, everyone. We've now come to October 5th. We're moving right along, uh, unfortunately, moving quickly through the month of October already as well. Uh, it's getting scary. We're, we're now uh, two months away from our concert, hopefully, that God willing, that the uh, everything with the virus calms down in between now and the 5th of December. This is, So we're two months away uh, from our concert with the Harp Twins, and we're really looking forward to that concert. So we pray um, that everything goes well. And so with that, we should be starting soon with the, with the sale of tickets for that concert. So, um, but anyway, let's get back to the, the thing at hand today, which is the daily devotion. So, uh, again, hopefully we've got this all connected from my YouTube channel where this video is being placed in my absence. And hopefully Clint is now linked this at this time to the Facebook page for the church so that you can see it. All right. Um, we, we wrapped up chapter six on, on Saturday. And I think I said, I'll see you tomorrow, which was me not, me not me getting lost on the calendar when I'm pre-recording these things from one day to the next and skipping around and uh, getting confused. But at any rate, so we left off at the end of chapter six with the thing about the foundation. Um, you know, that if you if you don't have a deep enough faith that that you, you you're not going to stand up and uh, Jesus follows that story up or Luke follows that story up about Jesus with an, or another story about faith in Jesus. And this is a, a longer bit of text, but but it's a pretty straightforward and simple message, really. Um, a lot of I mean, this is what this is the thing about Scripture. Uh, it really shouldn't be that hard. But it is. Um, so we're going to look at chapter 7, and we're going to look at the first 10 verses. Verses 1 through 10 is what we're going to bat it off today. And this is a story about a centurion with a sick servant. And uh, he, he requests Jesus to, to heal this servant. And Jesus does. So, chapter 7, 1 through 10. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A, centur a centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly and who was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of having you do this for him, for he loves our people, and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I also am a man set under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he does, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. Then when Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him and turned to the crowd that followed him. He said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. He was near death and now he's healed in good health. Wow, that's amazing. That's awesome. That's a miracle. Um, lot, uh, several things. Like I said, it's simple, but there's several things going on here. Uh, first of all, um, Jesus is is back in Capernaum, right? This is his home base. Again, we've talked about Peter's house in Capernaum, and and how oh, I did see that when I was in Israel. It was really cool. Um, it was one of the more moving things that we saw in Israel, actually. But at any rate, um, he's entering Capernaum, and some of the leaders, the word, the, you know, the, the 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 heads of the synagogue, probably, presumably, which would be Pharisees, um, have sent. You know, a message to Jesus about this man who who uh, has his slave, the slave that's sick, and oh, by the way, he's important to us because he's given us money. He's built the synagogue. It's a financial, um, it, you know, it's financial. It's about money. It's all about the money. Follow the money, as they say. Um, so they have they've come to implore Jesus, who we are led to believe that the Pharisees, though there are some that like him, that that some of them have issues with him. But yet Jesus is of, of, of use to them now. So he they want Jesus to do this. Do this one thing for me, Jesus. Just heal this guy. So he keeps giving us money. Um, and Jesus is receptive of this request. So he's going to go to the man's house and, and see this servant. Um, 
to heal this servant. So Jesus is going to do that. And of course, the centurion hears that he's agreed to do it and is on his way. Uh, apparently, some of the, the you know, must have been a slave um, uh, that was with them that ran back to the house or somehow the word got back to the house quickly enough as they were moving along through the village on their way there. Um, and so he sends back the slave so just, oh, just, just, you know, just say the word and it will be, and I know it will be so because I know you are a man under authority. He has faith. This, this centurion, of course, is a God-fearer, isn't he? He's built the synagogue uh, and a lot of times the God-fearers were financial, you know, were benefactors to the, to the synagogues. So he has provided the, them with some finances and so they are, you know, they, they, he is a he's a believer. He just hasn't gone all the way. Probably he's waiting for Paul to come along and abolish that circumcision thing that we talked about under Galatians. Um, I'm kidding, but who knows? Maybe he was. Um, at any rate, um, so he he just says, "I know you are a man under authority. I know who you are. I know you have got that." Basically saying, "I know you have the authority of God on your side." Uh, he may not recognize him as being divine, but he understands that the, the, he has God's authority. Just like the centurion has the authority of Rome, he realizes Jesus has that authority and that power. And so just let it be so, and Jesus does. And so, and of course, Jesus says, uh, even in Israel, I've not seen such faith as this, especially perhaps in Israel, I haven't seen such faith as this. Um, it's really a, it's a wonderful story. It's a great story. Um, like I said, they, um, it just, it shows that, that it's all about faith. It's all about having that foundation that we talked about on Saturday. We have that foundation. We can have that faith. Um, we need to, that foundation needs to be that we realize and we accept and we honor that authority that God has in our lives and in this world. So with that, I'm going to let you go for this Monday morning, and we will see you again tomorrow. Um, I'm getting closer. I'll be, you know, be back. I'll be back in uh, the office a week from today. So have a blessed one, and uh, take care and be a blessing to someone today, as always. Bye bye.